Pro Wrestling Weekly. For over 20 years, the revolutionary force in sports entertainment radio talk. Is cooking. WBCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. The longest running pro wrestling radio talk show in the history of terrestrial radio. And he's obviously Michael Cole. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. You really do sound like a... A a grizzled old vet. Is that what you were going with there? Yes. To not get you in trouble? Oh, I'll get in trouble at some point, believe me. I'll do something. Well, to keep you out of trouble in this case, at least. And now, here are your hosts of Pro Wrestling Weekly, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Ooh, I'm getting good at this radio thing. Yeah! It only took you five and a half years. I'm not good at it yet. It's, I'm starting. Yeah, you, yeah. Only slightly. Slowest escalator upward. Shut up! There's the sound of the bell, and we are set to go. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you alongside Twitch back in studio. Hello. Always fun to be here. I will admit that uh, I was a little surprised because I knew that you had something later today as far as a booking. Indeed, but I don't have to be there until later, so. Oh, okay. Do you want to... Is your chance oh, to give a cheap plug? Yes, like that, right. That's where Sorry. I was going with this. Like, Sorry. hey, let people know where you're going to be, where the people can see you. <laughs> they don't want to see me. Uh, I'm going to be know, a drop be like, kick. Be like Mick Foley, put butts in the seats, you know? I don't, I'm not a draw. But anyway, you can save that clip. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> that's going to haunt me. Yes, it is. <laughs> Anywho, I'm going to be at Dropkick Depression today. In Old Bridge, New Jersey, at the Knights of Columbus. Let me just pull up the flyer here. It will. I did kind of throw you, you know, <clears throat> uh, kind of off guard with that. A last minute. A, a last, last minute. minute thing. Yeah. You know, uh, it's going to be at the Knights of Columbus in Old Bridge, New Jersey. Uh, let me. I'm still trying to look for the for the flyer, or I could just go to their Facebook page where you can uh, find out all the events, all the the matches that will be going on. You can also check out past Dropkick Depression events uh, on Indie Wrestling TV. That's IWTV. You can get that on in the uh, App Store or Google Play. Here we go. I got it up here. Thank you. Computer, yes. So it's going to be at the Knights of Columbus Hall, 61 Pine Street, Old Bridge, New Jersey. The doors open at 7. The show begins at 7.30. And the proceeds benefit the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Indeed. It's a very, very worthwhile cause. And uh, I'm very excited to finally be a part of it. As soon as I found out like what Dropkick Depression was all about, I really, really, really wanted to... Uh, Get in. Yeah. And um, the matches, you know, we're, I don't know about... Oh, I know I will be in the uh, Battleborn Royale. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so I'm going to have an opportunity to fight for my spot. Or I don't know what I'm fighting for. Maybe bragging rights. <laughs> uh, but As you're opposed al- to your dreams? I always fight for my dreams. Had to get your catchphrase in there. Well, it's not my catchphrase, but it's certainly been adopted. It's something... Uh, it's- something you're very familiar with? Yeah, it, that's that. When Daniel Bryan said that, it, it held. It, it was something I hold very close to my heart, but I can't take credit for it. Just you know, yeah, it's pro wrestling. Everything's borrowed <laughs> or stolen. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, very good point. It's as, as if you were unintentionally transitioning <laughs> or to forgotten that. at a steakhouse. But that's beside the point. Uh, there, well, we'll have uh, Tara Calloway will be there. At Drop Born to Fight 3, you'll have Joe Gacy, Anthony Gangone, uh, Ophidian, very talented luchador, okay. uh, the king of snake style, uh, Solo Darling, uh, Matt McIntosh. Oh, there's a name I haven't heard and seen in forever. Yes, he's, he's been around. Well, I know he's been around. I just, yeah, he, his path and my path haven't exactly crossed. Not by choice, it's just... Uh, the Whisper from Jakar. A lot of names from Jakar are going to be there. It's going to be a very fun show, and I suggest you all... If you're in the area, please come out and support. And not to be outdone, if you're a little bit further south, uh, 
You can come check me out on commentary doing uh, the MFPW. It's ladies' night tonight. Yeah, no, I'm not going to bring up the cool in the gang thing. Uh, th- no, no. Okay. You are neither cool nor the gang. I know. I'm well aware. Thank you, Ferran. <laughs> Well, I mean, maybe I'm more the gang than I am cool with all the voices. Yeah. And, you know, multiple Fair personalities. Enough. Knocking over mailboxes. Yeah. yeah, 541 Mantua Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey. Uh, for the ladies, MFPW. Yeah, for the yeah. MFPW. Mm-hmm. Ladies Night, where the ladies get in for free. And tickets for non-ladies are $7.50. Indeed. I couldn't have phrased that any more awkward. Yes, you could have. <laughs> And uh, next weekend, you know, we it's going to be three weekends in a row of the MFPW, but next weekend is a big one, because we are having the notorious 187 Homicide huh. returning to the MFPW with a mystery partner to take on our current tag champions, Money is Inevitable, the team of uh, Royal Money and Travis Jacobs. Yeah, it certainly should be interesting, it's, as it Indeed. always is down in the MFPW, but... Enough shameless self-promotion. Let's get to other shameless promotion. Uh, namely, well, one... Just more, sh- more shame- shameful uh, faux pas. <laughs> well, yes. and uh, Well, I mean, it's not all bad. I mean, well, first we've got we've to talk about the fallout to all out. Yes. Ooh, that actually... Yes. I, I just thought of that now. Mm. It just kind of rolled out there. Doesn't surprise me. Yeah. You're chock full of gems, you are. I, I Indeed. <laughs> Even if they're covered in, in bits of coal at this point, there's a diamond somewhere in there. Just yep. getting crushed like in Superman 3. In All right, come on. I just no. I wanted to put you over, and now you got to just turn it into... Oh, well... Boy. Hey, all right. Not every Superman 3 reference that I bring in is a, is a gem. Now, the one that you weren't here for with the whole Cleveland thing, that was a whole other story. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Ugh. That was, that was a couple of months ago. That was a fun one. But no, all out. So um, a lot coming out of it. Uh, Nyla Rose winning the 21-woman casino battle royale, last eliminating Britt Baker. Yeah. So uh, she is uh, one of the two competitors for the inaugural women's championship for AEW on the October 2nd episode of AEW on TNT, which I don't know if I told you, I'm going to be there. Hmm. Going all the way down. Last time you were at DC and a wrestling show was on accident, I believe. You from almost, you me, yeah, almost, almost an accident. Um, well, no, I almost ended up there, but it oh, have been by accident. oh, yes. oh, oh, yes, that was uh, that was Home Alone seven and a half lost in DC. <laughs> we'll just we'll leave it at. I that. I don't think the streets are numbered. I can't quote Mulaney on that. Darn no, it. how'd you get lost in DC? It's very simple. It, yes, yes, it is. Although the Metro helped me out, but that's a whole other story. Uh, but yes, uh, she'll be taking on the winner of uh, Riho and Hikaru Shida, which uh, Riho won that one. So it'll be uh, those two facing off on October 2nd, which isn't that far away. We're just three and a half weeks away from that debut show. Yeah. Where does the time go? Uh, also in the pre-show, Private Party defeated uh, Angelico and Jack Evans. Oh, I wasn't able to see the pre-show, but I'm sure that match was a banger. That well, from what I yeah, I didn't get to see much of it, but from what I saw, it, uh, they were all bangers. Uh, SoCal Uncensored uh, beat Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, and Marco Stunt in the six-man tag match. Yes, uh, Pac beating Kenny Omega by referee stoppage. Yeah, well, well, Kenny Omega did not tap out, but he was. Uh, it was very clear that he was not conscious. Yeah, when Pac had him. Uh, Kenny Omega had him in this one-winged angel where you have him up in a. For lack of a better term, it's the dad holding up his son so he can see the parade. Mm-hmm. An electric, yeah, electric chair. chair yeah. <clears throat> and as he's going to uh, f- clear the leg to hook the head for the one-winged angel, Pac reversed it into a Rings of Saturn. It was huh. quite magnificent. Yeah, very, very well done and one of the few things to stop Sephiroth. <laughs> You know, Final Fantasy VII reference I there. Completely, for the, yeah. Well, not everybody. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm I'm throwing a reference out to a 22 year old video game. So you know, I got and I'm a, and, and, and yeah, surprisingly, it's a game that's older than you are. It was surprisingly picked up by a, that reference was was caught by a 21 year old. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the best way to describe me. I'm a 21 year old. Yeah. Just letting that alone. Yep. Uh, Jimmy Havoc winning the uh, the three way hardcore match uh, known as the Cracker Barrel Clash. Yep. 
And that now I want match. some hash brown casserole. Darn it. That was a interesting match, to say the least. Absolutely. The Dark Order beating best friends to get a first round bye in the AEW World Tag Team Championship Tournament. But, also a nice little surprise, a freshly squeezed name showed up at the end to help the best friends. Hmm. Yes. It was fantastic. I love the best friends, and I love... Uh, Dark Order, formerly known as the uh, the Super Smash Bros, they they tangled a lot with the Young Bucks and PWG, and very talented, very French Canadian tag team. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. We oui. uh, also uh, Cody beating Sean Spears despite Tully Blanchard, a little little ace up Cody sleeve of MJF. Yeah, that was a. Uh... <laughs> I was not expecting a little bit of a head scratcher. Yeah, it was v- rather interesting, but also an appearance from an enforcer. Mm, <laughs> that was great. Yes, <laughs> most certainly was. And uh, the Lucha Brothers they uh, held on to the AAA World Tag Team Championship, beating the Young Bucks in an Escalera de la Muerte match, or ladder death match for those who are not as familiar <clears throat> with Spanish. That was uh, that match was fantastic, but also certain points where I was f- scared. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nick Jackson, I believe it was Nick Jackson uh, getting pushed out of the ring <laughs> on top of a ladder. <clears throat> and <clears throat> there were two tables set up. And what was supposed to happen was he was supposed to fall through both of the tables. What happened was his foot caught the top rope and he only landed through one of them Though he might have clipped the edge of the the second. Oh boy! Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and then a uh, but then some n- new faces showed up. I- indeed. As Lucas was going to, y- yes, I have to call this out. I'm I'm sorry, not sorry. Yeah. But as you were going to open your water bottle, a good amount of it spit. Do you mean to get you like a, a napkin no, or a I paper can do towel that or something? I, I can clean up the mess that I made. For uh, Contrary to popular belief, I am, in fact, an adult. So I will. That is very popular belief. Well, yeah. of the, yeah. Of the, the, the contrary. Right. <laughs> of the contrary. <clears throat> and finally, uh, well, the name of the week, to say the least, one Chris Jericho. <laughs> He defeated Adam Page to win the inaugural AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Now, I have to say this and, and give all credit where credit's due. At 48 years old, Chris Jericho continues to find ways to be the talk of the pro wrestling world. I honestly think he is in contention to be considered one of the greatest of all time. No one has been able to reinvent themselves, albeit successfully every single time, as much as this guy has. No one has... He had. He has had consistent matches. You know, he may, might have had to take out a few things here or there, but he hasn't had to completely alter his style. He is... Timeless. Yes. Timeless. There will be kids who will know who Chris Jericho is for years and years possibly even decades to come. Well, after defeating Hangman Page to become the first ever AEW World Heavyweight Champion, well, he had an interview that, um, I don't even know if I can necessarily describe it. I'm just going to let him speak for himself, courtesy of Bleacher Report Live. Chris, Chris, can we get a quick interview? Oh, I'll give myself an interview. Isn't it funny how whenever somebody wins a world championship... There's always a standing ovation, champagne, roses, flowers. Yet I got a whole backstage area filled with mutes. Nobody can believe that Chris Jericho is the first AEW champion. Pure silence. There's no thank you for Chris Jericho. There's no round of applause for Chris Jericho. But that's okay, because I got my own thank you, because I'm the first AEW champion. Oh, you see that, Bucks? Chris Jericho, the first champ. How apropos, isn't it? Great, great match, Chris. Yeah, thanks. That's all you're going to say? Congrats, man. Yeah, no thank you from the Young Bucks? Is that what you really want? You just want to thank you? You just want the title. You know what? You know what? Even if you did thank me, I wouldn't even accept it. Okay? Congratulations on having Chris Jericho as the new AEW champion. The pleasure's all yours, Bucky boys. Huh? You can be quiet. All you be quiet. Look at you. Nice hair, idiot. What's your name? I don't care. Shut your mouth. All the cops can't believe it. Paramedics. Huh? Where were you when I was bleeding to death? Standing around like a bunch of morons. 
Look at you, giant idiot. What's your name? First AEW champion. And the whole city of Chicago, the loudest city in the world, renowned for being the best wrestling crowd in the world. Everyone's silent. No one knows what to say. Because Chris Jericho is the first AEW champion. Look at this, a whole other round. All you guys can stand in the back of the line. All of you. Look at you. Librarian, you're gonna tell me to shush? Up yours. Scorpio Sky, you'll never get a shot at this, you hear me? None of you guys. Idiots. Now he's making his way to the locker room as he's carrying the microphone here. All right. I guess I'll just have to have my own celebration, won't I? Since nobody else seems to be here. That's fine. I'm an only child. I got no problem celebrating by myself. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. Cheap salami. That's what Chris Jericho gets. Bunch of crap. Look at olives. Look at this. Look. This olives are nothing in there. And you look at this one. There's a little guy in there. Can't even get proper olives, can ya? What else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Want some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Huh? Oh, I think he might have had a little bit more than... Yeah, he might have had more than just a little bit of the bubbly. More, more than just... A little bit of the bubbly! Indeed. Oh. Yeah, that became internet fodder for the entire week. <laughs> I mean, I have seen uh, clips that have been put in to... Um, oh, why am I drawing a blank on who did the song Nookie? Uh, Limp Bizkit. Limp Bizkit. okay, yeah. Uh, where they replaced Nookie with bubbly... <laughs> Um, I've seen uh, what, what was Mambo the other number one? five. Mambo number five. Yeah, a little bit of a little bit of the bubbly. A little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> uh, oh. yeah. And then there was also one with the Powder Puff Girls. See, this one I was not aware of, and I'm kind of upset that I wasn't aware of it. <laughs> Yeah, That's I, fantastic. Yes, the, the internet, they do what they do when it comes to... Uh, <laughs> you know, I love the internet and I hate the internet, but this is one of those moments where I really, really love the internet. Well, as if all this wasn't wild enough, there's a little bit more to it, and we'll get to that on the other side of a timeout here. Ooh, you tease. Uh, well, I'm looking at the time here. It, it just flies by so quickly so we'll get to that we'll also get to ed from northeast philly on the other side and a whole bunch more stuff here on pro wrestling weekly on 1490 wbcb and online at wbcb 1490.com if you miss jolly and the loon you miss the stanley cup winning st louis blues head coach and former flyer frank baruby when i go out in this town and i see these people now like they're just they're so happy and it's crazy around here. I just can't believe, you know, the way it is, to be honest with you. You never know who's going to stop by for a visit, so don't miss the next Jolly in the Loon Friday at 1 p.m. on 1490 WBCB and WBCB1490.com. More people are online every day to check and pay their bills. Now you can have your BCWSA utility bill delivered electronically. Enrollment couldn't be easier. Just go to bcwsa.net or call 800-222-2068. With e-billing, you have control to see your bills when you want, set reminders for each new bill, and best of all, the service is free. Sign up for e-billing at bcwsa.net. Your partner for a safer environment, BCWSA. Proven. All commentators heard on WBCB express their own views. Their opinions are not necessarily those of others on WBCB, including the staff and management. The stigma of addiction is destroying lives across the country, preventing our loved ones from getting the help they need. We are Shatterproof, a national nonprofit dedicated to ending the stigma and devastation addiction causes families. We are changing laws, creating a community of support, and providing evidence-based resources for prevention, treatment, and recovery. Stigma shatters lives. Rise up against addiction now so another life isn't lost. Get involved at shatterproof.org slash rise up. Oh, He's got man. the Luigi death stare from Ferran, so he might have to I stop. didn't give you the Luigi death stare. That's Shh, not true. You're breaking cave <laughs> Breaking cape. I'm going to break <laughs> something else during this commercial. There we All go. Right. That's what I like to see. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your hosts, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Are so we good. getting into that controversy again? <laughs> Ugh, I know how it feels, and it's not fun. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you alongside Lucas Twitch DeSangro. Hello. 
And unfortunately not. A little bit of the bubbly. That's not going to get old. At least not for a little bit. No, I hope if we if we use it properly, then it won't get old. Well, yeah, there's 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 more to the little bit of the bubbly story that goes on here as uh, as if the winning the title and all, everything that you heard in the interview wasn't wild enough. Uh, apparently, he had a little more than a little bit of the bubbly as his title would go on to disappear. Hmm. And Jericho ended up filing a police report for grand theft in Tallahassee, Florida. Here, here's this is the official report. It says. The victim reported the theft of his championship wrestling belt while he was eating inside Longhorn Steakhouse. The victim stated he arrived at the Millionaire Club airport terminal and placed the belt inside his rented limousine. The limo driver shuttled the victim to Longhorn for dinner. The victim remained at Longhorn while the limo driver returned to the airport. Is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to I got to say this. Uh the the limousine shuttled the victim. <laughs> Out of context, does that man really sound like a victim? I know it's grand theft and they have to word it certain ways, but you shuttled the victim in his limousine to Longhorn Steakhouse. I don't feel that, I don't feel like I'm suffering that much if I'm in that. Yeah, not really a feels bad man moment. I mean, it, it's. It is, but it isn't. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, the limo driver shuttled the victim to Longhorn for dinner. The victim remained at Longhorn while the limo driver returned to the airport. The victim had taken the wrong luggage from the airport, and the driver took it back to the terminal. When the driver picked up the victim from the restaurant, the belt was missing. Responding officers searched the limo and airport for the belt without success. So, Jericho picked up the wrong luggage, right? Yes. Is that what he's saying? From the limo when he went to Longhorn. Well, from the from from the airport, like he, you know, the, the baggage just comes out. Maybe he just picked up a bag that looked like his, but it was actually somebody else's. Right. He's still reporting grand theft because he took someone's bag. <laughs> I'm the maniac. <laughs> and it also notes here, victim Christopher quote Jericho end quote Irvine. <laughs> This w- Chris, quote unquote, Jericho. It's, I'm just imagining Doctor Evil, Jericho. Yes, W slash M eleven nine seventy, referring to you know white male, date of birth November 9th, nineteen seventy. So I that- just thought they were predicting how many WrestleManias they were going to go. <laughs> well, they've already went eleven. They've definitely gone nine, and uh, maybe they're saying seventy is going to be the next worst one. Who knows? <laughs> no, that'll be the next time Jericho comes back. <laughs> When he's 70? Break the walls down and maybe a hip. (laughs) (laughs) So that led over the course of the early part of the week to a rather noted game going on uh, over the course of the internet as pretty much people everywhere were wondering that rather noted popular question. Yes, I'm adding Tavares in here for effect. Who done it? Yes, wondering who done it. I think Jericho knows the answer to this. It was the bubbly, Austin! It was the bubbly all along! Well, it seems to be an answer that we'll never know, as uh, while the internet played the game of whodunit, it was reported uh, a little bit later in the week, a couple of days later, that the Tallahassee, Florida Police Department recovered the missing AEW championship belt. Now, there was no word whether any arrests were made or if the belt was simply returned, but if you ask Jericho, he told the tale a little bit differently, as uh, noted here from his YouTube page. Hi, I'm AEW champion Chris Jericho, and less than 24 hours after I launched a worldwide investigation to find my missing championship title, it's been returned to me. And it's not because of any law enforcement agency that was too busy with posting pictures on Twitter and then deleting them and then posting them again or a funny meme or a clever gif is because of me. It's because I put the fear of God into the hearts of those who robbed me, who committed grand larceny. I told you I hired the best professional private investigators in the world today. And as a result, I got back the most coveted prize in professional wrestling today. The most coveted prize in the world, period. Worth more than Marcellus Wallace's briefcase. More valuable than Han Solo dipped in carbonite. 
more critically revered than the Ark of the Covenant. The AEW Championship title is back where it belongs. Over the shoulder of the champion. And as I sit in my palatial estate, in my beautiful mansion, drinking a little bit of the bubbly, I once again demand, and rightfully so, now more than ever, a thank you from the entire AEW fan base, from the entire AEW roster, backstage, front office, in the ring, all across the board, because I did, once again, exactly what I told you I was going to do. I got this championship back, and I am never, ever letting it out of my sight again. I'm never going to lose it. I'm never going to be robbed of it. You're going to have to pry it out of my cold, dead hands if you want to take this from Chris Jericho ever again. And that's fine. I'm in no rush as I await for all of you to bow down on your knees and thank me. It's good to be the champion. It most certainly is. That can be arranged, Jericho. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, on behalf of Pro Wrestling Weekly, I would like to thank Chris Jericho. I would also like to thank Chris <laughs> Jericho for being a timeless, t a tale as old as time, and just keeps going. <laughs> Song as old as rhyme. Beauty and the bubbly. <laughs> Beauty and the bubbly. Wow, there, there it is. Uh, champion. Champagne for the champ. Yeah, yes. champagne for the champion. Yes. Ah, can can we get or the or Orson Welles? Ah, the French champagne. <laughs> the second take where he's completely plastered just goes. <laughs> French champion. It's oh 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 that yeah. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> he just sounds just like a what? sounds like a cow. <laughs> All right. Well, while we recover from the uh, the bubbly bits here, <laughs> let's uh, go on to a look at the local scene, courtesy of Ed from Northeast Philly. Ed, welcome to the program. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, how was your holiday? Holiday? Oh, that's right, Labor Day. It, it's a holiday. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I worked on it, so it didn't feel like a holiday. I saw the film uh, Ready or Not. <laughs> not not named aptly. It should have been. The theme song should have been the song by the Fugees, but unfortunately it was not. <laughs> um, that was very. It was a very good movie, though. On September 21st, in Monroe, New Jersey, the Legends of the Ring 29 convention, they have Nigel McGillis, Adam Brown, Butch Reed, Ron Simmons, Teddy Long, David San Martino, Medusa, Rhino, to name a few. You had yeah. me at McGinnis. <laughs> now I'm, I'm looking at it here. Let's see here as, a, as I'm bringing. Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling up the Legends of the Ring site here. So I see there's a super ticket lineup including Psychosis, Super Crazy, What, Hooventude, uh, Paul Orndorff, Mr. Wonderful. <gasps> they call him Mr. Wonderful. Will Gary Spivey be there of the Psychic Network? I, I, I don't know. I still have to scroll down. Yeah, uh, the, oh, you'll love this. The Killer Bees. <gasps> B. Brian Blair and Jumpin' Jim Brunzel. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter's going to be there. Ooh. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Medusa. Oh. Uh, the Road Dog. Yes. Dangerous Danny Davis. Ooh. Uh, the Pope. D'Angelo De Niro, formerly known yeah, yeah. as Elijah Burke. Yeah. yeah Cowboy Bob Orton. Ooh. Yeah. I think I said David San Martino. Yep, David San Martino is going to be there. Uh, wow, Sarah Schreiber. Hmm. Yeah, How Brian Clark, doing? Wrath, Adam Baum. Ooh. Corporal Kushner. They I finally were able to bring in Adam Baum. He, the radiation's died down enough from Three Mile <laughs> Island. Yeah, ice, oh, wow, Ice Train from WCW is going to be there. Uh, ice Train? Yep. Is that a wrestler or a tag team? No, he was a wrestler. He, he wrestled uh, in WCW. He was back in the mid '90s. Uh, of course. Uh, Devon Dudley. Ooh. Heidi Lee Morgan. Great name from the past. 
Uh, Bill Alfonso. Uh, as long as he doesn't bring the whistle. Uh, you know he's going to bring the whistle. I know. That's his trademark. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. It's... Now, un- unfortunately, unlike Joey Styles' wishes, he never did swallow that whistle. <laughs> I think that was from Heat Wave '98. Where I just wish he'd swallow that damned whistle. I think I think it might have been. <laughs> yeah, Kevin Owens is going to be in the Saturday Mall this coming this coming Saturday. He's he's what? He's going to be signing autographs at Dynasty Sports at, the, at, at Oxford Valley Mall. Oxford, oh, yeah, Oxford Valley. Okay, I think he said. Uh, yeah, I was going to say George's. I thought I thought that was the only. Then he said Oxford Valley, and I was like, oh. Yeah, no, it's the, uh, the the Kevin Owens experience at Oxford Valley Mall. It's one week from today from noon to two. Can we do a run? <laughs> I, oh, I see. You, you, trying, to, trying to pal up with him by business because you know you wouldn't be allowed to otherwise? Yeah. Maybe. 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 Just in case a certain cagey person is listening. Maybe. Or maybe it would just be a good way to promote, you know. You can meet Kevin Owens and listen to two buddies talk about wrestling. Trust me, he's not listening. Blowing up my spot for on. So nowadays I just get blown up with everything I do. Oof, same. OPW is in Williamstown, New Jersey at 7.30 p.m. bell time at the H2O Center. Nick Gage, Matt Tremont, and Drew Blood. Yes, Nick Gage court. is going to be wrestling uh, Kit Osborne tonight in a first blood match for Kit Osborne's On Point Wrestling Championship. And I think I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. I got the for Pop Pop. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, what's going on back there? Sounds like, what, is there a party going on? Um, I'm broadcasting live. Technically, I'm broadcasting live from uh, Community Day at, at the Holmesburg area. Oh, okay. So there, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know I was that close to the guy. Well, thankfully, well. he didn't say anything inappropriate. <laughs> and we would have been in trouble. Well, it's not that kind of community, Lucas. I don't know. Everyone slips up every now and then. Uh, we were going to bring it down, but we didn't know about the weather. Uh, yeah, I mean, th- there was so much iffiness. Didn't know what was going to be going on with Dorian. I mean, thankfully, it kind of headed off the coast a little bit, although um, that is going to affect something for WWE. We'll talk about that coming up in the third segment. Mm. And the fire truck just rolling up for the kids. We'll hear till you know, it's going to last till about three. If okay. In the area. There you go. A little, little something to head down, down to there. Yeah, a little community day. Can't go wrong with that. Not at all. It's just a shameless plot. <laughs> There's no shortage of those on this show, Ed. You're fine. Uh, blood, like I was saying, Bloodsport is in Atlantic City next weekend with yes. John Moxley and Josh Barnett. Yep. GCW presents Bloodsport. Knockout or submission only. <laughs> hmm. I think that's at the showboat. Uh, that's correct. It's the showboat in Atlantic City. Yes. 801 Boardwalk. Uh, live, WWE Live at the Trenton coming up next month. October 19th. Tickets are on sale now. At Chiro Arena. Oh, that, that's right. I forgot they renamed it. I'm I'm still used to it being the, the the Sun Bank Center or even the Sovereign Bank Arena, but that's I'm showing my age a little bit there with that. And CCW, I didn't even realize it was changed. CCW is doing a Friday night show on September 13th at the Sports County. Hmm, that should certainly be a goodie. And I think they're doing something on a Sunday too with another promotion. It's entirely possible. I think it's called Green Tree Promotions. Hmm. Can't say I'm familiar. And Super Crazy is coming up next week at the Homestead Boys Pub. 
Super Crazy Wrestling, not the actual wrestling. Not the actual, yeah, no. Super Crazy the Wrestler is going to be at Legends of the Ring. Yeah. Uh, to Kayla's this afternoon also, right down the street from here, at the Wrestle Factory, Joey oh, Janelli, Mac Michael Bush, Fire and Solo Garning. Hmm, there's a lot going on, that is for sure. And National Pancake Day at the end of the month, technically. That's kind of random. Day. Pancake day? day? Click, click, bloody click, Pancake Day! <laughs> and uh, I play America. Hmm. Oh, I was going to say, I thought Pancake Day was, was earlier this year. It was in March, I thought. You could argue that WrestleMania was Pancake Day for for Kofi winning, you know. I suppose. Uh, uh, Lucas, I, I dropped your name at uh, for a promotion if you're interested. What what promotion? A uh, super crazy pro. Super crazy. Hmm. Did you pick his name back up after you dropped it? Yeah. <laughs> they might have just spat on it and walked away. <laughs> we appreciate it, though. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. I wasn't going to go that far. I was just... Oh, don't worry. I was. <laughs> and what were you saying? Oh, by at God. The top, of, top of the show, something about Old Bridge, New Jersey? Yes, Dropkick Depression, Born to Fight 3. All right. All right. Yeah, that's going on tonight uh, up in Old Bridge. That's where Lucas is going to be. Uh, we're... Parting ways, one of many times, uh, as I'll be down at the Monster Factory for uh, for the event uh, later tonight. I, I think there's a, isn't that the one with Teal Santana on the card? No, that's uh, that's SWF Battleborn. Uh, 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 I'm getting those two mixed up. Well, that just goes to show how many events there are. That there's so much going on in one either concentrated area and or yeah. one one particular day. Yes. I mean, we think we, I think we just rattled off like five different events that are all going on within a what fifty mile radius. Yeah. yeah. Not to mention they're going to have icons coming up. I should have more information in the weeks to come. Yep. Certainly looking forward to more information on the local scene here, Ed. But right. we're going to uh, take care of our bit of time out here. Enjoy Community right. Day, and we'll catch up with you next week or whenever your next soonest convenience is. All right. All right, thanks. Have a nice day. Thanks. You do the same, Ed. Ed from Northeast Philly, giving a look at the local scene, and who knows what else you're going to get from <laughs> from him. Drop my name. I'm kind of proud of that self-deprecating uh, zinger I just threw out there. See, I just I just stopped it. We did you pick it back up? I wasn't going to talk about spitting at it and walking away. I, mean, I know. It's... I just thought it was funny when I said it. It was just really. And so it got me thinking. You know, the chic. Look at switch to sangro. Ah, tui. Madison Square Garden, number one arena in the world. <laughs> right. So, what? Oh, what? You're allowed to do the impersonation, but I'm not? Well, it wasn't so much about allowed. It was just like, all right, I... It's one of those things, almost like, you know, a family guy takes a joke, then they kind of take it a little too long, and then, well, I guess the next step is they take it so long that it becomes funny again. You kind of stopped it too long, that's all. Right. Don't don't go for the latter though. That's that's some pristine Seth MacFarlane comedy. That's yeah hard to replicate. Okay. Okay, I got it. Just making sure. Uh, just all right. How's that novel going, Brian? Right. Well, we're gonna come back on the other side. We've got uh, some news, including that uh, that weather related thing and how it's gonna affect WWE. A little bit of a a little bit of a surprise there. Also, some more on the upcoming changes in September and October to the various TV shows, and uh, a bit of a uh, a battle over a catchphrase. Right. Oh, you did hear about yeah, this. I heard about this. Well, we're gonna uh, we're gonna hear from the man on the other side. Which one? <laughs> well, you'll figure it out on the other side here on Pro Wrestling Weekly on fourteen ninety WBCB and online at wbcb fourteen ninety dot com. Hi, this is Dr. Lee Piccarello inviting you to tune in every Friday morning at 8 a.m. to The Head Game, a must-listen show for athletes and coaches of all levels and ages. Mindful Athlete Training in Newtown, Pennsylvania is a mental circuit training program that prepares the athletes to perform at the highest level of today's game. Athletes get into the zone faster and stay there longer.
Tune in every Friday morning at 8 a.m. right here on WBCB 1490 a.m. and throughout the world at WBCB1490.com. Are you a parrot head? Away again in <laughs> Not that kind. Oy dana, oy dana, my love to papu. That's more like it. If you're this kind of parrot head, don't forget to check out the Denny O Polka Show every Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon right here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. The Bristol Borough Community Action Group Food Bank at 99 Wood Street in Bristol has been serving Lower Bucks County since 1971. It's your monthly tax-deductible donations that allow us to provide food for hundreds of households each month. Please consider a generous one-time or recurring monthly donation at www.givebucks.org. That's www.givebucks.org. Help us help those in need. Please donate today. The Bristol Borough Community Action Group, 99 Wood Street, Bristol, PA, 19007. You won't see termites crawling across your floor, but thousands might be devouring the wood in your walls, weakening the structure of your home. For over 50 years, termite proofing and pest control of the Delaware Valley has been in the exterminating business. If you think you have a pest problem, they're the experts. Call them today at 215-639-5455. That's 215-639-5455 for TPPC. Termite proofing and pest control of the Delaware Valley gives your home or business peace of mind knowing your pest problem is in their hands. Located at 1560 Bristol Pike in Ben Salem, they use only EPA-approved material applied by licensed technicians. Call Termite Proofing and Pest Control of the Delaware Valley at 215-639-5455. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, September 7th. On this date in 1988... The NWA held its third Clash of the Champions Supercard, titled Fall Brawl 88. In the main event, Sting defeated United States Champion Barry Windham by disqualification. On this date in 1997, the WWF held its 17th In Your House pay-per-view, titled Ground Zero. In the main event... Shawn Michaels fought The Undertaker to a no contest. On this day in 1998, WCW Monday Nitro aired live from Pensacola, Florida. In the main event, Diamond Dallas Page and Roddy Piper defeated Sting and Lex Luger by disqualification. On this day in 2008, WWE held its Unforgiven pay-per-view. In the main event... Chris Jericho defeated Batista, John Bradshaw Layfield, Kane, and Rey Mysterio in a championship scramble match to win the World Heavyweight Championship. This has been Today in Wrestling History, September 7th. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you alongside Twitch. Hello. Good to be back. Yep. I think, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And we're talking all kinds of stuff. We're going to finally get away from a little bit of the bubbly. At least for a moment. At least for a moment. You, Richard. <laughs> it was good, though. I, I, I'll, I'll give you credit. That was very good. So, uh, AEW, uh, some other AEW news. They've announced uh, their next pay-per-view. Uh, and they've announced uh, the match that was supposed to happen at All Out. John Moxley against Kenny Omega. And that'll be for the Full Gear pay-per-view. And that'll be held Saturday, November 9th in Baltimore, Maryland at the Royal Farms Arena. And additionally, they announced that the main event for that will be none other than Chris Bubbly Jericho against Cody for the AEW Championship. Yeah. It's going to be a great match. Yeah, a lot of different announcements. Uh, a lot WWE of different uh, reactions to it, too. Some people were not pleased, but I say get over it because it's going to be a good match. Yeah, no, no complaints here. WWE, meanwhile, announcing at the NXT television show that uh, they're going to have it air on the USA Network on September 18th and 25th. 
But the first hour will be on USA Network. The second hour will be on WWE Network. So it's kind of like a transition from the WWE Network to USA Network. Hmm. The full two hours are slated to air on USA Network beginning October 2nd, which coincidentally is the same night that AEW debuts its weekly television series on TNT. Ain't that a coinky-dink? No. No, not even a little bit. It's what we call a power play. (laughs) If anybody knows anything about power, it's Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Yep. All right, my voice already wasn't doing good, and that's not helping. So I'm not. That's that's all you get of my McMahon voice this uh, for a could while. Could have just left it to me. I could have, but I just was. I was. I was on a roll with it. Uh, NXT also having announced. Uh, they announced a couple of matches for that September 18th premiere on the uh, the two hour show. Uh, they're going to have Velveteen Dream against Roderick Strong for the NXT North American Championship. Ooh. And a triple threat for a, uh, essentially a triple threat number one contenders match for the NXT Women's Championship of uh, Bianca Belair, Mia Yim, and Io Shirai. Mm. Mm? When's Candice LeRae going to get her shot? Interesting question. Uh, and also, we mentioned it earlier with regarding the weather, WWE announcing the cancellation of tonight's live event that was scheduled for a Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, They issued the following statement regarding the cancellation. Due to expected severe weather and hazardous conditions this weekend, WWE has canceled Saturday's live event at the Halifax Forum. WWE takes the safety of its fans and superstars seriously and urges caution to all in the area. Now, of course, the, uh, well, there's still quite a bit left of it, but what is left of Hurricane Dorian is expected to hit Nova Scotia this afternoon. Hmm. After battering bits of Florida and the Carolinas, now it's kind of taken that hook. Thankfully, it avoided us. We just got a little bit of a sprinkle yesterday afternoon because it was well out to sea. But uh, Nova Scotia is a little bit out there, and it's right in the trajectory. So hopefully, uh, hopefully all is well there. And also, uh, a couple of matches added up to the lineup for uh, Monday's Raw in New York City, Madison Square Garden. Mm. Greatest. No, we already did that. Uh, yes, uh, we've got U.S. champion AJ Styles and Cedric Alexander in a non-title match. Ooh. And this is interesting. A battle of WWE's four horsewomen. Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair in a tag match against Sasha Banks and Bailey. Three heels and a face. Interesting. Now, the company had previously announced that Steve Austin will moderate the contract signing between Seth Rollins oh, and Braun Strowman. darn it. Strowman. I messed up. Ah, oh, oh, it's too late now. I could have went three heels and a baby. I that would have been good. Yeah, that would have been good. <laughs> no! Uh, the, yeah, Austin moderating the contract signing between Rollins and Strowman for the Universal Championship at Clash of Champions. Also, you're going to have... Uh, I guess we can quickly get into this here since we've got a little bit of time for it. Just a little, though. Uh, two of the, uh, well, yeah, I guess one of the semifinals matches for the King of the Ring. Do tell. Yeah, so it's going to be rather interesting as uh, because Samoa Joe and Ricochet, that match ended in a double pin, they're both advancing to the semifinals, so it's going to be a triple threat match. It's going to be Ricochet versus Samoa Joe versus Baron Corbin, who dispatched of Cedric Alexander in just under 15 minutes last week. That was a great match, though. Had me on the edge of my seat. Meanwhile, over on the SmackDown side, Elias having pinned Ali is going to advance to the semifinals. And his opponent, Chad Gable, who upended Andrade in just under eight minutes. So it'll be Samoa Joe, Ricochet, and Baron Corbin in a triple threat match to advance to the tournament finals. And Elias against Chad Gable, that'll be on SmackDown, also at Madison Square Garden. And the respective winners, they'll face off one week from tomorrow at the Clash of Champions pay-per-view or WWE Network special. So there we go. Love getting that King of the Ring theme in. Not, not too much longer I can get it in, so got to get it where I can. And finally, one last little bit here. Ric Flair telling TMZ that he intends to file a trademark in an attempt to force WWE to pay royalties over Becky Lynch using the man persona. Wow. 
Yeah, Flair said that he loves Lynch but feels the company owes him based on his use of the to be the man slogan. Uh, Flair said that a WWE... Well, the whole rivalry was her calling herself, that nickname was stemmed off of her and Charlotte. But, like, it, there, there, there shouldn't be a reason for you to ask for more money like that. Yeah, there is. It's called alimony. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> yep. That's a good point. I mean, how, uh, how many wives has he had now? Was he on number three with, uh, with, with Wendy? Alimony and bar tabs. That's, uh... Yep. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> now I'm trying to remember how many, uh, no, this is, uh, I'm sorry, this is number one, two, three, four, this is number five. <laughs> yeah, my, 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 my point stands. <laughs> All right, you know what, just maybe just give him like a, f- a few, a few bucks here and there. But yeah, he, uh, he he talked to TMZ Sports. He said that a WWE attorney balked when Flair raised the issue and that Flair's own attorney was blown off by a WWE attorney in 2018 or early 2019. Yeah. It's uh, interesting, to say the least. Yeah. Yeah, we were going to bring you the clip, but for time purposes, we're going to have to hold off on that. But uh, well, we've got... Uh, we're, we're at about that point of the Rosie and Jamal three-minute warning, so... No, nothing on that one. That was a little before your time. Fair enough. As it's the one reference I I didn't pick up on. Uh, out of many. Out of many. Yeah, that was from, that was I think. Yeah, it would have been what about two thousand three? I guess is when Eric Bischoff he'd send Rosie and Jamal out. Right. To, yeah, yes. There you go. Right. Did I just hear myself say three, three minutes? minutes? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, so that means that it's time for birthdays. What? Huh? Just. Uh, Seeing what what other what other addendum you were going to throw in, if any, no, yeah. just leaving it as is. All right, we've got four plus three Brucey bonuses. Ooh. All right, and this date in 1957, actually one that was mentioned earlier, strangely enough, Michael Penzel was born, the former WWF wrestler and competitor in many promotions in Japan, known both as Leatherface in Japan and Corporal Kirshner really? in the WWF. Wow. He turned 62 today. Nice. On this date in 1962, George South was born. The journeyman enhancement talent for Jim Crockett Promotions, the World Wrestling Federation, as well as World Championship Wrestling. He turns 57 today. Hmm. Here's a name you'll actually remember, because I know those were a little on the obscure side. On this date in 1977, Nora Christina Greenwald was born. The former two-time WWE Women's Champion and former WWF Hardcore Champion, known as Molly Holly, (sighs) turns 42 today. Yeah. A saint. A saint, indeed. And on this date in 1986, Colin Matthew Delaney was born. Ooh, he's a trainer of a friend of the MFPW, uh, Plunkett, the Ogre. Mm Mm-hmm. And he was also a former WWE competitor under its ECW brand. Yeah, Yeah. those days are probably better forgotten. But uh, nonetheless, he turns 33 today. Wow. So, yeah, he was was in there real young. Because, I mean, that was, what, about 2006? So that would have been 13. Yeah, so he would have been, like, 20 when that... (laughs) 20 or, he was in his early 20s, to say the least. He was a baby. He was. And now to the Brucey bonuses. Things outside of the world of wrestling, and I think you'll appreciate at least two of the three of these. Ted will appreciate one, the other one for sure. On this date in 1947, Gloria Fowles was born. The singer known for disco-era hits Never Can Say Goodbye and I Will Survive, known professionally as Gloria Gaynor, turned 72 today. First I was afraid, then I was petrified. And that never changed after all these years. Nope. Isn't that right, Danny? Oh, uh, is that the little little below the belt? A little, just uh, he's shaking his head at me. We were having such a good time. Oh, he's not listening anyway, please. <laughs> On this date in 1950, Julie Deborah Kavner was born. The actress, comedian, and voice actress known for roles including Brenda Morgenstern from the sitcom Rhoda, and probably best known for her voice role as Marge Simpson on The Simpsons. Yes. She turned 69 today. And on this date in 1954, Corbin Dean Burnson was born. The actor and director known for his role as Arnold Becker on L.A. Law and known to Ted and I as Roger Dorn from the Major League movies. He yes, turns 65 I today. I know who he yeah, is. Yeah, Roger Dorn, 65. Where the heck does the time go? Well, it's slipping away here. Funny how it does that. So we're going to head on out of here. Ted's going to come on in, take control of the country roads. And, uh, well, I don't know about Twitch. I'm going to go and have myself a little bit of the bubbly. 
day Had drinking, get... Ferran. Really, <laughs> you're better than this. <laughs> I didn't say right after. All right, Ted's up next with the with the country roads. Play us out, Nutsy. One o'clock in Old Wales. Serving you better than ever before. This is 1490 WB.